What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Dylan the Villain. With me, as always, is the one and only Sky Wutai. And we are on episode 101, if I'm not mistaken. We're either on episode 100 exactly or episode 101. But before we start this, we are going to have a huge um, special episode dedicated to breaking 100 episodes of TEW. We're going to have uh, a special guest with us on the next episode, which not going to be spoiled, but it's going to be something big. Um, a longtime fan of the channel, uh, BioCorps, is going to be with us. Uh, but me, with me, right now, is the one and only Sky Wuta. Sky Wuta, how are you doing? Tired. Tired. <laughs> yes, I, I agree with that one. But we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We are Monday Night Raw, week one of October of uh, Monday Night Raw. We are the day after the Unforgiven pay-per-view. Uh, didn't do so great. Didn't get 100, but it still got us a good rating. But we are in front of 14,776 people in the Rose Garden. And we're going to go ahead and knock out this pre-show. And our pre-show bout... That had superb wrestling, little heat. Ultima Dragon defeated Jujin Thunder Liger by submission with a Dragon Sleeper. The match got a 70. That could have been on the main card. Um, I want to get both these guys more TV time. I really want to push one guy in particular. But uh, the language barrier is kind of setting him back a little bit. But we are going to work around that and we are going to try. But Ultima Dragon uh, picks up the win here tonight in our pre-show matchup. In our pre-show main event, it is Steve Mother Blackman taking on Al Snow, and he wins by submission. Steve Blackman with a 61, Al Snow with a 47. Color commentary gave the match a boost. The match got a 58, and we are going to go ahead and start the show. We're going to start the show, and it is tonight we are saying that Triple H is going to be calling out staying Scott Hall and Kevin Nash here tonight. That... Um, Triple H wants to know. Triple H, you know, Triple H is tired. Triple H is upset that they keep getting, coming in his matches. And uh, Triple H is one not to back down with a, from a fight. And we are going to have an interview from Triple H here tonight to close out our show. This segment got a 100. It's basically hyping up that Triple H is going to be here tonight and he's going to be calling out. Sting, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash. We move on to our opening contest of the night. Which is the Dudley Boys as they defend their newly won WWF World Tag Team titles. They defeated Ass Dutz last night at the pay-per-view. The Dudleys take on the Eliminators and beat the Eliminators when Bubba Ray Dudley pinned John Cronus. The Dudleys make defense number one of the WWF World Tag Team titles. Match against 71. Devon Dudley with a 79. Bubba Ray Dudley with a 72. Perry Saturn with a 58, and John Cronus with a 49. The Dudleys, we already know, have excellent tag team chemistry. They also have the tag team specialist bonus. John Cronus and Perry Saturn have great chemistry teaming together, and they also have the tag team specialist bonus. That's a color commentary. Gave the match a boost. We move on to our next segment. Good job. Good first title defense. And we see Big Show... <clears throat> Ooh, my voice almost gave out there. That's not good. We see Big Show backstage as he's getting <clears throat> as he's getting interviewed by Michael Cole. And Michael Cole is asking him, he goes, Well, um, we last seen you on Shotgun Saturday night. You you said that you were gonna be uh, do whatever it takes to become the number one contender for the World Wrestling Federation. World Heavyweight Championship, but you were attacked by Sid and Vicious, Sid, Sid Vicious and Vader, um, and they were saying that you you took their job. Do you do you know what they're talking about? And he goes, Big Show just shakes his head and goes, Yeah, I took their job when Vince McMahon had enough of dealing with them and enough of 
them failing to do his dirty work. And he's just like, they got mad because I took their job away from them. But the reason, but I just want them to know that them attacking me pretty much signed their own death warrants. He's like, I don't care if they're signed through the World Wrestling Federation or not. He's like, if they want to fight me, they know where to find me. And I'm here each and every week. And I'm here destroying people, taking names, and sending people to the hospital. And if they want to join that list, that long list of people that I already put out, then they're more than welcome to do that. We're going to end this segment. It advances the Battle of the Giant storyline. And now the color commentary gave a little action boost. This time we got a uh, 89. We are going to move on to the next segment here tonight. Which is Double J Jeff Jarrett defending his newly won European Championship. Two title matches here tonight. As Double J de defeats number one contender Fit Finley in 13-01 by pinfall with a flying lead drop. I don't ever remember Double J Jeff Jarrett doing a flying leg drop, but hey. Um, Double J makes defense number one of the WWF European Championship. Uh, the match got a 77. Double J with an 80. Fit Finley with a 60. That is good stuff right there. I expect Fit Finley to be around that. Uh, announcing Color Carpenter getting the match boost. And hey, Double J and Debra have pretty good chemistry. 77. We move on to our next segment. Wait a minute. Ah, yes. I cut his promo due to Tom. Jeff Jarrett was supposed to have a promo, but I cut it during time. Basically, the promo was going to say that um, I'm the new European champion. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and um, I'm, I'm going to be the best champion in this company. I don't care if this Intercontinental Champion, I don't care if you're a World Champion, Tag Team Champion, Light Heavyweight Champion, I'm the best champion in the World Wrestling Federation, but I had to cut it due to time. But this segment, we see The Undertaker go in there, and he's just like, Vince, he's like, I don't give a damn what happened at the pay-per-view. You're going to pay me what you promised me. And that's a shot at the World Wrestling Federation World Heavyweight Championship. And I want my title match. Right? And I would have won that match if it wasn't for my brother Kane and all that stuff. And Vince McMahon's like, Taker, look, I know what you did to my wife all those months ago. And he's like, and honestly, I'm not afraid. Of anything that you got to say. Because honestly I believe that you're all talk. And Taker's kind of starting to get mad. And he's standing there. And he's just like I'm all talk huh. And Vince is like let me finish. You see. You say how you're going to beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that you're going to beat him. And that you're coming up with every excuse in the book. And the Mark Calloway that I know. The Undertaker that I know. Doesn't make excuses. He goes out there and he does exactly what he says he's going to do. Whether it's whether it's beat people up or whatever, he goes out there and does exactly what he says he's going to do. And Mark, he kind of just stands there for a second. He's like, you know what? You know what? Yeah, you're right, Vince. I'm tired of making excuses. I'm tired of people holding me back and I'm tired of people holding me down. And you know what? I'm not going to ask for your permission to go take what I want. I'm just going to go and I'm just going to start taking whatever the hell I want. Vince is like, well, hold on a second here. He's like, you you want your shot. You want your shot at, at the World Wrestling Federation Championship. He's like, Stone Cold not only beat you, but he also beat your brother Kane. And you're saying that Kane was the reason that you lost the match. So he goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, this Friday, we're going to have a new television program that is going to be on Friday nights. 
and it's going to be a brand new hit series that is going to be dedicated around younger new talent the the big names he's like I'm, I'm hoping that this show becomes our our a show like Monday Night Raw it's going to be a special one of a kind TV show if it's a Takers was like, okay, well, what does that have to do with me? He goes, well, you see, on that show, I want you to take on your brother Kane. And whoever wins that match, he goes, I promise I'll make y'all the number one contender. Takers like, you better keep your damn word. Vince is like, I promise. I'm going to keep my word. He goes, whoever wins that matchup will be the new number one contender for the World Wrestling Federation World Heavyweight Championship. Taker leaves the room. And Shane's just like, what about Steve Austin? Vince is like, what about him? He's like, well, he beat Kane and Undertaker. Wouldn't that make... Steve Austin, the number one contender? And Vince just shakes his head and is like, Steve Austin's never, no matter what, is going to face for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And Shane's like, I mean, don't you think Austin's going to come out in the match and, and and stop it? And Vince is like, you know what, Shane? That's, that's pretty brilliant. He goes, there's going to have to be a winner. He's like, I'm going to make it a false count anywhere, no disqualification match between Kane and The Undertaker to where there has to be a winner. That even if Stone Cold gets involved, he, he's pretty much signing his, his own death warrant. Shane's just like, yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. So we're going to move on to our next segment, which is Mr. Money Knight, Rob Van Dam, taking on Lance Storm. Lance Storm had a big matchup with Eddie Guerrero for the Light Heavyweight Championship at the pay-per-view. Lance Storm couldn't get the job done. And he can't get the job done here tonight as he takes on Rob Van Dam in 1256. By pinfall, Rob Van Dam picks up the win with a five-star frog splash. The match got an 82. That was all Rob Van Dam with a 90. Lance Storm with a 48. Camp Cornette storyline advances. That's Cody Carter Carrier getting the batch boost. And RVD and Jim Cornette have that pretty good chemistry. Ta uh, pretty good chemistry. We move on to our next segment. And we look at the Jumbotron. And it is Sabu and Bill Alfonso. A 98. Holy shit. Uh, Sabu and Bill Alfonso. And Bill Alfonso is blowing the whistle. And he goes, Rob, you see, you, you left. You left ECW. You left Extreme Championship Wrestling so you can make more money. And now look at you. You're just a washed up version of what you used to be. You're nothing like the Rob Van Dam that I used to manage. You're nothing like it. You're just a washed up ass man doing, running through your little routines, doing your little flips and tricks. You're not extreme. You're not the highlight reel that you used to be. You're just a joke. And if you were with me and Sabu, we would be the tag team champions. We would be on top. You would still be the light heavyweight champion. And you got to deal with stupid Jim Cornette, who's probably taking all your damn money, just like he took everybody else's money that he manages. And you're just too blind and stupid to see it. And if you come back with us, Rob, we would definitely have some hard times, if you know what I'm saying. And Jim Cornette's in the ring, and he looks at Rob Van Dam and is like, what, 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 what is he talking about? What, what is he talking about? Rob's like, shaking his head, and he, you know, he's like, ah, shut up, I ain't listening to you, you know. Like, I ain't, shut up. You know, and Bill's just like, well, since you don't want to join us, then I guess you're against us. And that means that Sabu is looking to take your spot and become a champion here in the World Wrestling Federation, Rob. 
So you better watch your back. And you better count your days and know who your friends are. Because soon, Sabu is going to take you out. And bring you out back to the pasture and put you down just like old Yeller. And he's going to take your spot. And he's going to be champion once again, Rob. See you later, Rob. And, sleep, and, and, and hopefully you sleep with one eye open. And that was pretty much that. That got a 98. Jim Cornette uh, has a stomach. Ah, uh, yes. I forgot to change his gimmick. I need to freshen up his gimmick. That's getting stale. Um, this advances to Camp Cornette storyline. And Jim Cornette uh, benefited from having a hot new catchphrase. We are going to move on to our next segment. And it is Kurt Angle. Hey, we haven't seen Kurt Angle in a while. We haven't seen Kurt Angle in a while. And it is Kurt Angle. And it says that next week on Monday Night Raw, Kurt Angle is going to return. He's making his return back to the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, Kurt Angle um, breaking kayfabe here. Uh, Kurt Angle ended up getting hurt at a house show. And uh, he was out for a few weeks. So uh, he's, he's going to be back. He's going to return next week on Monday Night Raw. Uh, the big return of the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. We're going to move on to our next segment here. And it is Dr. Death Steve Williams taking on Rikishi. Dr. Death Steve Williams picks up the win with the Oklahoma Stampede. Against Rikishi, the match got a 75. Could have did better. Steve Williams with an 81, not bad rating. And Rikishi with a 53, not bad rating. Not some color complicated, the match boost. And Steve Williams benefited from having a hot new move. And this segment is a 100, and we see The Rock, the new Intercontinental Champion, The Rock. In the room with Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon. And The Rock, Vince is like showing him papers and, and showing him like something. And The Rock's like, a whole TV show, huh? And Vince is like, that's right, this Friday. First first episode, it's going to be a big special. And The Rock's just like, a whole episode. A whole TV show dedicated to just a... To just one thing that I said. And Vince is like, I loved it so much that I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I just had to take it from you. The Rock's like, no. The Rock, the Rock's very honored and everything like that. And Vince is like, well, since you are going to be my new son-in-law in the future. He's just like, I, I figured I would go ahead and give you your, pretty much your own show. You know? And he's like, I, 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 I love the name so much. That I took the name of the show and named it after the show, SmackDown. I loved it when you said, I'm going to lay off the SmackDown. And so I just had to take the name and and use it for my show. Rock's like, not take it. You know, uh, as your new Intercontinental Champion, uh, I'm looking to be a champion who defends his title each and every week. Vince is like, yeah, that's right. That's what I would want from my future son-in-law on The Rock. Every, like, every time he says that, The Rock kind of just... You know, like, he didn't tell Vince that him and Stephanie are not dating yet. And then walks Jericho. And Jericho's just like, just the man that I wanted to see. And The Rock kind of gets defensive and stuff. And he, Jericho's like, whoa, 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 no, no. You see, as the former La Champion of the Intercontinental Countries, I figured that it was only best that I reinvoke my rematch clause for my Intercontinental Championship. And Vince is like, okay, yeah, yeah, you do have a right to that. And Jericho goes, I didn't want to wait. And, you know, I was walking through the hallway and I heard about this new TV show that's going to premiere on Friday that you're naming after Dwayne here called SmackDown. And, you know, I figured, what a better main event would it be than the one most electrifying man in sports entertainment taking on the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla, Chris Jericho, for that Intercontinental Championship. And I thought, what better way to main event that show 
The Rock show than having The Rock in the main event defending that newly won Intercontinental Championship against me, Chris Jericho. And uh, Vince is like standing there and he looks at The Rock and The Rock kind of, you know, The Rock has that face like that he has in his picture, you know, he's just standing there. And he goes, what do you say, champ? You think you can defend your championship against me? And The Rock's like, look here, Jabroni. Look here, Jabroni. I beat your candy ass so many times. Uh, he's like, I beat your ass so many. I beat your candy ass so many times, Jabroni, that beating your ass one more time will finally shut you the hell up. And he's like, Yeah, just like how you wanted Stephanie to shut the hell up, right? And the Rock kind of stands there, and Vince looks at him a little bit, and he's like, well, What? What is he talking about? And he goes, Oh. I guess Rocky Boy didn't tell you that him and Stephanie are no longer a thing. And Vince kind of looks at Rock and he's like, is, is, is this true? Rock doesn't say anything and he goes, Yeah, he didn't tell you that Stephanie McMahon uh, has finally realized why Chris Jericho is the best in the world at what he does. And Vince kind of looks at Jericho like, D are you saying that you're fucking my daughter? You know? And The Rock's just like, shut your candy ass up, Jabroni. He's like, yeah, me and Stephanie are going through a, a tough patch. Right? But, uh, we're, we're still a thing, Vince. And Vince is like, well, if you say so. And Jericho kind of just laughs and shakes his head and goes, whatever you got to tell yourself, Rock. Whatever you got to tell yourself. He goes, you know what? I'll see you this Friday on SmackDown. And uh, shine that title up real nice for me because uh, it's coming back around the waist of where it belongs. And we move on to our next segment of the night. We go to commercial and we come back and it is Owen Hart. Then he's standing there with Michael Cole. And Michael Cole is like, Owen, last night at Unforgiven, last night at Unforgiven, you beat Brett the Hitman Hart. You might have used some underhand tactics. And some people said that you really didn't beat him because you had to cheat to win. And Owen's like, a win's a win! And the Hart family, and the Hart family knows that you got to do whatever you have to do to pick up the win. Just like Brett, when he was champion, we he, we did what we had to do to pick up the win. And like the old saying goes, if you're not cheating, then you're not trying. <laughs> and Michael Cole is just like, well, um, I mean, you did pick up a, a, a win, a big win against Brett the Hitman Hart, uh, your brother. Um... Is there anything that you want to, you know, is like, what, what's your plans for the future? Brett's like, well, since I beat Brett, that only means one thing. I know there's a lot of men going around here saying that they're the number one contender for the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. But everybody knows that the real number one contender was Brett and I beat Brett. And that makes me the number one contender now. And I'm going to go out there. And I'm going to beat Kid Shamrock. And I'm going to show everybody why I'm the real number one contender. I'm not going to go to the back to Vince McMahon and whine and complain about why I deserve it. Or cut a promo talking about how I deserve to be champion, the number one contender. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to prove why I deserve to be the number one contender. So, turn up the volume on your TVs. Make sure your picture and quality is set right. Because you're about to see why they call me the King of Hearts. And Owen walks off and he goes out there. And he does exactly what the hell Owen Hart said he was going to do in a poor match that only got an 83. But that's okay because I forgot to put... No, I did put the storyline. Let's see why this did horrible. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I did so bad. That's terrible. 
Owen Hart with a 93. Ken Shamrock getting up there with an 87. The match got an 83. Could have did better. And about that had superb wrestling great heat. Owen Hart defeats Ken Shamrock in 13-27 by pinfall. We are going to move on to our next segment. Owen Hart goes out there and does exactly what he says he's going to do. And he beats Ken Shamrock. Pretty much showing that, hey, I, I'm, I'm the number one contender around here. A lot of men claiming that they are the number one contender. I was not supposed to go to this. All right. As you see, some somebody has came back. I was not supposed to go to this. I accidentally clicked on the next thing. But Triple H comes out. Um, we're going to try to sum it up now uh, instead of dragging the whole promo out. But uh, Triple H comes out. He calls out Sting. He said, Sting, he goes, I know what your plan is. I know what Hall and Nash's plan is. He's like, I know what y'all want to do. Y'all want to win this World Heavyweight Championship from me. Take it back to Eric Bischoff and throw it on his table. And destroy the World Wrestling Federation. And that, that was your plan when you tried to control The Undertaker with his urn. That was your plan when you tried to take over Kane and The Undertaker. That was your plan for doing a whole bunch of stuff. That was your plan. But here's the thing, Sting. If you say that's your plan and that's what you want to do and blah, 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 blah. Then you can just come out here and face me like a man. You want a shot at my championship? I don't care who says they're the number one contender. I don't care what match you won to, to, to think that you're the number one contender. I'll defend this title against anybody and, and anyone at any given damn different time because I am the game and I'm that damn good. And I don't give a shit who you are or what company you work for. If you think you're man enough to step in the ring with me, then step in the ring with me. I'm the best and I prove each and every night why I'm the best when I was the Intercontinental Champion. And now I'm proving once again that as the World Heavyweight Champion that I am the best. And then Sting pops up on the Jumbotron. And he goes, Hunter, <laughs> you're, 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 you're pretty smart, kid. You see, when everybody else was trying to figure it out, you, you, you seem to put the pieces together and figure out exactly that. And Hall and Ash is behind Sting, you know. And he goes, you see, many months ago, Many years ago, I should say, when these two men jumped to WCW, they had a vision. They had a plan that they were going to take over the world of wrestling, that they were going to take over WCW, that they were going to remold the wrestling landscape and their image along with one you-know-who. And they came in and they destroyed a company that I loved, that I helped build, that I put on my back, that I was the franchise player of for many years. I was the good guy. I was the face of the company. And all those stupid fans turned their back on me and accused me of being the third member, being the man that was teamed up with these two to destroy a company that I helped build when it was, in fact, none other than you-know-who. The fans turned their back on me and I never again let the fans have their way. So, you know, I went to Hall & Nash after they conquered WCW and took it over. And I went to Hall & Nash and I said, hey, why don't we do that all over again? Huh? Why don't we do that with our competition? Y'all like making money? Y'all like... Y'all like making money, right? Well, they... And Nash is shaking his head yes. And Scott's, you know, he's standing there and he's running his hands through his hair. He's like, these guys love making money. And what better way to make more money than taking out the competition? Taking out... 
taking out the competition, taking out the company that didn't see the value in them. You see, it's, this is all Vince McMahon's fault anyway, right? You see, if Vince would have just gave them a little bit more money instead of being the selfish, egotistical son of a bitch that he is, and not opening his eyes and seeing that these two men behind me possessed more talent and more charisma in them than half the roster, than more than 90% of the roster that y'all have active today. Vince McMahon wouldn't be a millionaire. He would be a multi-billionaire just like Ted Turner. And that's why these two men worked for WCW. Because Ted Turner and Eric Bischoff was smart enough to see that these two men are money. These two men print money. You keep saying, Trips, that you want a match that I want that World Heavyweight Championship. No, 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 you see. I will take that championship from you when I believe it's time to take that championship from you. Right? I'm living rent-free in your head, man. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your head. I live rent-free in your head. Every night when you go to sleep, the last thing you think of is me, Hall and Nash. The first thing that you wake up in the morning is me, Hall and Nash. And this wolf pack that we put together are going to come in here and we're going to eat and destroy everybody who stands in our way you see i didn't need people from the inside i needed people from the outside who hated this company more than i hate this company so with that being said i think it's showtime and then all of a sudden through the crowd out comes Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, and they jump the guardrail, and they start beating up Triple H as Sting is, as they're still standing there. So it was a pre-recorded promo from Sting as he's still standing there, and we, the camera's going all around, and we see Sting standing in the rafters, you know, and he's just looking down, laughing and smiling as Scott Hall and Kevin Nash beat the shit out of Triple H with ball bats. And all of a sudden, Shawn Michaels' music hits, and out comes Shawn Michaels, and he runs out there, and he starts fighting off Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, trying to save his former friend Triple H from a beating. And they start getting the better of Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels starts getting it, and then all of a sudden, here comes Kid, the one, two, three Kid, X Pac, whatever you want to call him. He's going by Kid. He comes out with a steel chair with a pipe, and he. Hits Scott Hall in the back and Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels Sweet Chain Music's Kevin Nash. And he rolls out of the ring. And they roll out of the ring. And the crowd is happy to see Kid back. Kid, The Kid is back in the World Wrestling Federation. He's been away for some time. And he is now officially back. Shawn Michaels goes to help Triple H up. And Triple H kind of just looks at him confused like, why the hell are you helping me? And he kind of just... Shakes his head a little bit like, what, what? why the fuck are you helping me? As we finish the show, as Shawn Michaels stands there, he doesn't help Triple H up or anything like that. And Kid offers his hand and helps Triple H up to his feet. And Triple H is looking at Shawn Michaels like, and Kid and looking at him like, why, why the hell did y'all come out and help me? But we're going to go ahead and finish the show. Okay. And the show got a 91 and increased our popularity in 15 regions. Would increase our, uh, we would have gained popularity in Canada, but um, we are very limited to TV deals in Canada, and I think we have the best TV deal that we can get in Canada. But um, not a bad little show, 91, not a bad show. We're going to go ahead and finish the show. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Don't tell me that. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so we have some decisions. Hopefully nobody <laughs> failed a drug test. Um, but or any nothing bad happened. Uh, but thank you all for watching, guys. Thank you all for liking the video like always. Thank you all for leaving a comment down below. We are having a 
basically a 100 episode special. It will be the first episode of Friday Night Smackdown. I was about to say Shotgun Saturday Night. We are getting rid of Shotgun Saturday Night. I might keep Shotgun Saturday Night depending on um, what fans say, but I kind of want to get rid of Shotgun Saturday Night, uh, to be honest with you, and go for Friday Night Smackdown. Smackdown being the new show, it is going to be our 100th episode of TEW Special. 100 episodes of doing the save. It's going to be our pretty much uh, 100 episode special of that. We are going to check that. Uh, God dang, that's terrible. <coughs> that's, that's terrible. Ultimate Warrior. Oh man, that is that is terrible compared to that. You know, so. Uh, it's going to be our 100th episode special. Uh, I can't wait uh, to record that and get that out to y'all guys. I've worked um, so hard on this save and kept with the save. And it did so much um, to get to 100 episodes. And I'm glad uh, for those of y'all have been with me from, uh, been with us, I should say, from the beginning. Uh, I highly thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. And... Uh, like, I, I can't express how much uh, it means to me that uh, y'all stuck around this whole time. Um, all 661 of you subscribers, I thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Thank y'all for sticking with us for 100 episodes, and uh, we highly appreciate it. Guys, my name is Dylan Villain. Like we always say here at Programming Gaming, if you can't play with each other, do what I'm doing right now and play with yourself. We will see y'all on SmackDown. Thank you guys.